Let's continue our discussion on Module 3.3, Climate Change. In particular, we will look at the basic mechanisms um, responsible for climate change as well as the impact of climate change to the society. So first, let's look at the basic mechanism. Okay? Again, our climate system is driven by two things. The first one is the energy budget or the way energy from the sun moves in and out of the atmosphere second the way heat is transported around the atmosphere so this is where the greenhouse effect uh, is working okay um, so again greenhouse effect is the global warming caused by uh, greenhouse gases okay and that this warming uh, makes our earth habitable so without this greenhouse gases earth's mean temperature will be about negative 18 degrees celsius currently the observed global temperature is actually 15 degrees celsius okay so what is greenhouse effect um it's a natural process no? again uh, naturally occurring gases these are the trace gases or greenhouse gases absorb heat no so we have this heat coming from the sun you know some of it is bounced back or reflected back at the top of the atmosphere some pass through and then reflected back at the surface of the earth but some of it no part of it comes um through no, inside of the earth and then the earth surface will um re it back no in the in space but some of this um some of this energy you know, mostly thermal energy or uh, infrared radiations are actually uh, absorbed you know, by these greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. However, due to human activities, more gases are produced, okay? More greenhouse gases are produced because these greenhouse gases here are also product of um, most of our industries, you know, whether it's in the energy sector, industrial sector, etc. And this causes an amplified or enhanced greenhouse effect, okay? Now let's look at the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases are actually just trace gases you know, in the atmosphere. In fact, most of our uh, gases is made up of nitrogen and oxygen you know, and some argon. And we call these gases uh, permanent gas. Well, uh, these gases, you know, the trace gases that make up greenhouse gases are just trace gases. Okay? But um, these permanent gases, uh, by the name itself, you know, are constant. Uh, in nature, so hindi sila masyadong nagbabago, no? and um, their changes take about 100 years, no? while the variable gases are very variable, spatially, spatially and temporally, so in time and space, okay, um, okay. but these variable gases no? um, ad, uh, identify no? the stability and processes in the atmosphere as compared to permanent gases, okay? And also, permanent gases stay in the atmosphere for quite very, very long time, you know? For example, nitrogen takes millions of years, you know, of residence time in the atmosphere, okay? Uh, for oxygen, it's around 6,000 years and so on. Well, for uh, our greenhouse gases, including water vapor, it's only a few days, you know? Uh, for carbon dioxide, maybe uh, more than a lifetime. Um, CFCs are more than a lifetime also, no? human lifetime. So uh, note that these greenhouse gases you know, controls our atmospheric circulations and other processes. They control our um, weather and climate. And of course, the global warming that or the greenhouse effect. You know? um, basically, in residence times, nila are quite... Um, uh, lower no, as compared to that of uh, shorter as compared to that of the permanent gases so that's why halos um, any changes in the permanent gases doesn't really affect no, our atmosphere but changes in the variable gases such as water vapor carbon dioxide methane cfc's no, and other trace gases will greatly affect our weather system or climate system okay so um this CFPs no, are mostly product also of, of this um, sectors no, 
our forestry, uh, energy sector, agriculture, even waste sector, and uh, other industrial um, activities. Okay, so these are our major greenhouse gases. Okay, and how much heat have we added to our atmosphere? You know, as compared to the natural causes of uh, production of greenhouse gases, it's actually a lot. Okay, so and also there are um, different uh, signals. Okay, so th this this graph uh, shows us the radiative forcing, you know, of these gases. Okay, and even um, aerosols. Uh, it it only means that if it's in this uh, to the right. It means it would contribute to warming. While if um, if the bar graph is on to the left, it means it contribute to cooling. Okay. So how much have we added so far? Okay. A lot, no? From 1950s, this is our the warming effect of uh, greenhouse gases. From 1980s, no, it almost doubled, and then uh, from 2011 onwards, it almost more than two times, no that of uh, the early uh, 1950s okay so we've added a lot now as as we are still developing and using um producing you know this greenhouse gases through industrialization so where do we get it from fossil fuels you know climate emissions as well so it's been increasing and um these are the main contributor you know, industry of course, the oil or coal, you know, even the aut automate, um, auto, no? car industries, you know? um, automotive, even the bank and finance you know, can affect um, the emissions of global uh, greenhouse gases because of uh, providing, by providing finances to this industry, okay, even electronics and drugs, okay. Um, and then how about deforestation? So basically, uh, the trees are actually carbon sink, meaning they they uh, absorb carbon dioxide, and um, deforestation um, can be um, can be thought of as increasing also carbon dioxide emission because basically you're removing the sink, you know? uh, and um, so far. No? Uh, uh, carbon dioxide emissions from deforestation add 10 percent of the global warming okay and in the philippines you know you can see you now from 1400s up to 1990s is the the decline is quite steep you know the decline in the forest cover is quite um steep okay right now of course we realize that forest is a very important um, mitigation uh parameter of global warming and we're trying to to uh, bounce back, but I don't think we can still uh, cope. Uh, we can still go back, no, to this time. Okay. Um, and so, um, globally, no, internationally, uh, we would like to uh, maintain a two degrees um, increase in global temperature. Okay. So we call um, carbon dioxide emissions, no, has been um, uh, projected you know, to peak by 2020 if we are we want only a two degree increase okay but note that uh, this is actually what we call our carbon budget you know, if we want a two degree uh, Celsius increase in temperature okay and um, there's only half you no know, less than a half left uh, and we think that before the end of 2045, you know, all the carbon that that can maintain this increase in temperature uh, will be um, used up okay so that's how fast we use uh, carbon uh, in in our industry okay so we use up you no know, over 250 years of this carbon budget okay so what is global warming um Basically, it's just the, the observed global temperature change, no, uh, which is caused by both natural and human-induced sources, as uh, shown in this uh, graph, no. And in the long run, this effect is due to the warming 
lead to changes in the Earth's climate. So note that global warming is not the same as climate change. But global warming will affect the climate you know, and will cause erratic changes in climate. You know. Climate involves not only temperature but also rainfall and other parameters. Okay? Extreme events. You know. Extreme um, events such as tropical cyclone, flooding, uh, what else are the impacts? No? Drought, etc. Okay. So again, no, I'm sure you, I'm sure we knew this observed temperature, and um, as I've uh, shown before, we have a budget of two degrees Celsius, but we are also pushing for a 1.5 degree increase. No, so far we're almost there. Okay. Later on, um, um, I will show you why do we want this. Why do we want to limit the increase in our temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2 degrees Celsius? No? What are the effects of such small um, increase or incremental of temperature uh, increase? No? So there's nothing we can do. No? Global average temperature has been increasing. No? It's already here. No? We cannot avoid its negative consequences. But what we can do is, of course, to adapt no, to these consequences. And maybe try to uh, improve mitigations you know, through international cooperations. Okay, so there's actually a climate emergency already because um, we cannot avoid you know, anymore the negative consequences of this increase. Okay, so it, there's a climate emergency, and uh, it means an emergency requires an immediate action. So what are the potential impacts of um, global warming you know, that will lead to erratic climate? So there are different you know, uh, impacts, both in temperature and precipitation, related in precipitation, related in even in sea level rise. You know? <coughs> so health impacts, you know, even the um, occurring um, infectious diseases can be impacted by changes in um, temperature and precipitation. Uh, surely there will be impacts on agriculture, of course, in our forests, water resources. Um, our coastal areas will greatly be affected by the sea level rise and also erratic precipitation patterns. You know, some of the species uh, and natural areas will greatly be affected you know, and probably some will um, experience extinction even. So in the health sector, according to the uh, US CD, USA CDC, climate change will affect air pollution, definitely, even vector-borne diseases, you know, um, such as that those that cause uh, dengue, for example, allergens, uh, water quality, food supply, environmental deterioration, extreme heat, and severe weather. So this you know, um, will greatly affect our health. Yeah, human health. Okay. Yeah. So it can, for example, it can accelerate transmission cycle of pathogens. Yeah. So if this is the normal, the normal one, yeah, under climate change, it will become like this. Okay. So early, early cycle. Yeah. Okay. Um, for example, maximum thermal tolerance of pathogens. Yeah may exceed two times the normal. Okay. Warm temperature also can lower uh, uh, host immunity. Okay. So shift in behavior, movement, and phenology of host and parasites. You know. So uh, climate change you know, may directly or indirectly affect the health sector. Okay. What else? How about the water sector? With a two degree increase in temperature, you know, experts found that 24% percent more of the population you know, will face reduced renewable groundwater and as the the temperature you know, increases you know, even higher um, more vulnerable you know, populations will be affected by reduced in uh, renewable groundwater resources and so on okay um, in terms of flooding there will also be an increase in exposure and vulnerability as we increase the as there's uh, the temperature increase 
no or the global warming uh, increases okay ecosystem it might even cause extinction no of some of the animal species animal and plant species okay so locally no in our case we are very much dependent on agriculture so our survival is intimately linked to the climatic conditions of our environment because of uh, in terms of food security and agriculture. In fact, there are studies that shows that for every one degree increase in minimum temperature during the growing season, rice yield decreases by 10%. So imagine just one degree Celsius increase. So which means if there's a two degree uh, increase, 20% you know, and so on. Okay? So there are direct impact and indirect impact to our agricultural and food security sector. Okay. Um, so IPCC, or the Intergovernmental um, uh, Panel on Climate Change, releases a special report no, um, on what will be the impact of a 1.5 degree Celsius increase in temperature. Okay. And, and this basically, you know, these are um, some indicators no, of our system. For example, our FC2 is an indicator for extreme weather events uh, and, and other um, factors. No? This is the impact and risk associated with the reasons for concern. So as we increase the temperature to, to 1.5, no, the reasons for concern, especially for extreme weather events, are increasing, no? moving to high reasons of concern. So aside from this, no, uh, if we go uh, particularly to, for example, in our case, no, the corals, our mangroves, you know, and uh, fishery sectors, an increase of uh, just a few degrees Celsius will really should be a uh, 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 high you know, reasons for concerns. So a small increase you know, in temperature, have uh, we have to adapt more. You know? okay. So to understand, so to assess projected climate change, potential impact, and associated risk. Basically, this is what the IPCC special report contains. Okay. So again, no, even small change in temperature can have big impact. Okay. Um, for the Philippines, of course, this is very much related to us, no, because we almost uh, experience all of these uh, droughts, extreme precipitations, uh, tropical cyclones, heat waves, no. So. Uh, and there is a strong e evidence, especially for heat waves and coastal flooding and extreme precipitation events no? from severe droughts. There's a strong evidence that human, you know, uh, that the 20th century warming causes this uh, erratic uh, climate change. No? These are the impacts of an erratic climate change. Okay. So another... Um, uh, way of looking at the impacts of uh, global warming no, or climate change in terms of temperature. For example, um, this is our normal climate. No? This is our average temperature and these are our uh, less um, extreme cold weather temperature and then the, these are our extreme hot weather temperature. So in a globally warmer world, uh, it can shift no, towards a higher average temperature and an increase in uh, uh, extreme no? uh, temperature no? or extreme weather or it can also um, increase not only the, the extreme uh, temperature conditions but also the the colder extreme weather conditions okay so um, climate change so we need to adapt okay but in adapting, we have to consider also not only the long-term effect of climate change, but also the short-term effect of climate change. So as we've shown earlier, no, climate change not only affects, um, let's see, so it doesn't only affect uh, longer climate, no, such as temperature pattern, uh, precipitation pattern. It can also um affects uh, weather conditions no? such as extreme precipitation events uh, tropical cyclones even no? 
So in, in adapting to climate change, we must always have uh, to consider not only sea level rise or increase in temperature or the, the melting of glaciers, but also non-climate related risks such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, no, um, flooding, okay, uh, heat, uh, tropical cyclones, etc. Okay. So again, no, just to wrap up climate change. So we have this GHG in the atmosphere that can cause global warming, but due to anthropogenic activities, this global warming is enhanced or amplified no, that can melt um, our ice cover which can then also cause sea level rise, not only from the melting, but from the direct thermal expansion of water. And it can also cause ocean acidification okay? because the ocean will uh, absorb more carbon dioxide that can cause ocean acidification. And then it can, of course, eventually uh, changes the climate and weather. And these changes in climate and weather you know, um, can cause um, some uh, disasters you know, such as floods, landslide, and um, drought. Okay. Okay. And this of course, you know, so you have these are the hazards, um, the exposure of course are the populations you know, and other entity. And this this increases our vulnerability and exposes our society you know, to this impact. So what makes a disaster? A disaster occurs when a hazard impacts on vulnerable people. So it's very important to consider you know, not only the hazard but also the vulnerability sec the vulnerability you know, and the exposed sector. 